when we talk about angels, it's because angels, angels of God are a part of the provision that God has you know, made available in the kingdom. They are part of the resource, the kingdom resource of God, as far as um, the believer is concerned. You know, in the kingdom of God, there are different hierarchies of, you know, spirits of, you know, celestial beings that um, make up the government of God. You know, and one of these beings that make up, you know, the kingdom government of God are angels. And <laughs> angels are so important as far as the advancement of God's kingdom is concerned because God, who is the creator of all things, all right, determined it so. So the subject of angels are, is, is not something that um, a believer can remove. It's not something that a believer can ignore. You know, to ignore the ministry of angels is to ignore an important part of God's kingdom government resource. So as far as the believer is concerned, the ministry of angels has been given to believers to advance the purposes of God in the life of the believer and through the life of the believer. Now, we have people in the body of Christ today who, you know, are so ignorantly obsessed with the demonic. They, 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 they even go as far as them. <laughs> they go as far as them, you know, um, getting PhDs in them, demonology. They know so much about angel, uh, demons. They know so much about the names of demons. They know so much about, um, you know, how demons operate, you know, how, you know, demons, you know, hide themselves and all of that. But so little is known by these same people about angels. Now, it's important to understand that um, the sets of spirits considered today as demons used to be a part of the company of angels that was, you know, subservient to, to God they served the purposes of God before they fell along with them, um, Lucifer. Now, the number of angels that exist today after the fall of Lucifer, in number, all right, you know, uh, um, still by far exceeds the number of demons. That means that there are so many angels compared to demons. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that um, the angels of God are encamped round about those that love him. That means that um, you have so many angels around you, you have the involvement of angels, so much angels around you that um, the number of demons, as far as access is concerned, is in so many ways much more little, you know, it does not come close to the number of angels that are involved in the lives of God's children. Now, having said that, it's also important to also understand that the activation or the involvement of the angels of God in the life of every child of God is to further, is to see to the advancement, the fulfillment of the purposes of God. The reason why God, you know, assigns angels to his children, all right, besides, you know, ensuring the protection, beside them seeing to the, you know, welfare and the well-being of his children, it is also to advance, to, you know, see to the advancement of his purposes. So for every child of God that is sent into the earth, he or she has a purpose. He or she has been given a purpose, what people call destiny, that, you know, you are supposed to fulfill on this earth. And every purpose that every child of God is assigned to fulfill are, you know, small fragments small expressions of the complete picture of God's plans. And as long as that which a child of God has been assigned to fulfill is a part of the complete picture of God's plan, then of necessity, the angels of God, by God's design, by God's command, are attached, are involved, are you know, given to work with the saints. Because that which they are sent to fulfill in the life of the saint is actually the purposes of God. Now, the purposes of God that has been entrusted to his children, which now in turn becomes the, in, the expression of the individual destiny 
of God's children. So it's important that as a child of God, particularly in these days and time in which we live, that you and I understand the ministries of angels. It's important that, you know, in understanding the ministry of angels, we are able by the, you know, operations of the Spirit of God, partner with angels to see to the furtherance, to see to the advancement, the accomplishment of the purposes of God. Now, so, it's very important that, particularly in these days and times we're living in, that as God's children, as, you know, members of the body of Christ, we understand the ministries of angels. We understand the role that they play in their life, we in our lives. We understand what they are sent to do. We understand, you know, the, you know, the, the expression of, you know, the assignment, the character of the assignment in our lives and through our lives. For example, every child of God, you know, on account of salvation, on account of, you know, becoming a child of God as a result of the finished work of Jesus Christ, you know, has been given at least one angel, you know, to be assigned to him. Now, there is no child of God that has not been assigned an angel. The Bible says in chapter 1 of the book of Hebrews, the last verse, that um, are they, in refers to angel, that are they not all ministering spirits, sent forth to minister for those who shall be heirs of salvation. Now, as soon as a child of God becomes, as soon as a person becomes a child of God, all right, he's assigned an angel. He's assigned, you know, an angel to help him fulfill the purposes of God for why he's been saved. Now, because as a child of God, there is an expression of, you know, various, you know, uh, 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 expressions of the counsels of the Lord that each one of us have been stewarded with. Each one of God, one of us have been made stewards of or custodians of. Now, the involvement of angels in our life, you know, by God, you know, is intended to help us fulfill that plan, to help us fulfill that counsel. Now, what I'm trying to, you know, help us see here is that um, the involvement or the attainment of angels in the life of a believer is not the idea of the believer. It is the Lord's idea. And that's because that which you and I are saints, you know, carry for God, that which you and I are saints have been sent to fulfill, all right, for God, actually are fragments of the complete purposes of God. So, the Lord sees to it that angel, as a part of one of his kingdom resources, as a part of, you know, one of his, you know, kingdom, you know, resource, are assigned to us to help us fulfill the Lord's purposes, to help us fulfill the Lord's plan, to help us accomplish, you know, the visions that he has put in our heart, to help us fulfill, you know, the assignment, the purposes and counsel that he has given to us. So that, like the scripture says, the kingdom of God can swallow up the kingdoms of this world. So, understanding how angels work, understanding, you know, who they are, understanding how they become involved in our lives is very, very important. Now, one of the first things I would like to talk about in regards to angel is the point in time that angels become attached to people. Now, first of all, the ministries of angels, all right, on account of the finished works, becomes powerfully activated in the life of every person who comes to God through the cross, through the blood of Jesus Christ. As soon as a person comes to God, as soon as a person becomes open to God, as soon as a person, you know, embraces the finished works of Jesus Christ and becomes a child of God, the ministries of angels become activated in his life. Now, reason being that, you know, the Bible tells us that, um, you know, we have in chapter 1 of Colossians that we have from verse 12 that we have become translated from the power of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. 
Now, and the scripture helps us also to understand that on account of what Jesus accomplished on the, on the cross, every believer have come into rich inheritances in God. That means that because of what Jesus accomplished, Jesus has come to a place in God where he inherited all things to the, or for the advantage of the saints. Now, one of the things that make up the believer's inheritance in Christ is the ministry of angels. That means that a person automatically, as part of what he inherits, you know, in Christ, you know, automatically receives the activations of angels. Angels become automatically involved, automatically, you know, attached to the believer. Now, that means that from that point in time, the believer becomes responsible for, you know, ensuring the full participation of the ministry of angels in his life. So, it becomes the responsibility of the believer to get the angels that have been assigned to him working. It is, not, it is no longer God's responsibility. The responsibility of God as far as the ministry of angels all right, is concerned is that he makes them available to us as part of our inheritance in Christ on account of the finished works of Jesus Christ. But it now becomes the responsibility of the saint to see to the involvement of angels, to see to the activation of angels in his life. Just like every other inheritance, just like every other thing that we've come to inherit in Christ. You know, such that, um, you know, okay, for example, the Bible says in chapter 1 of Ephesians, verses 3, it says that blessed be God, all right, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now, we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. That means that all of the things that have become ours in Christ have been made available to us through Christ, because of the finished works. But the enjoyment of these things that are our inheritors in Christ is now the responsibility of the saints. Now, and that also applies to the ministry of angels. Now, there have been many believers who, you know, have had, you know, very unfortunate um, situations in their lives. For example, some believers have been involved in auto accidents. Some believers have you know, experienced them, um, you know, terrible loss of, you know, things that belong to them, you know, and um, just because um, those things happened and there was um, little or nothing they could do, you know, they came up with excuses and say, okay, maybe God knew why it happened or, you know, uh, 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 um, um, God must have known why it happened such that, um, you know, probably he's trying to teach you and I lessons. No, that, that's not true. That's not true. Now, as far as the ministry of angels, all right, is concerned in the life of a believer. It is the responsibility of believer to enjoy, to release his angels, just like every other thing that makes up our inheritance in Christ. For example, you look at healing. Healing is part of the package that we have in salvation. But as a believer, if the enemy attacks your body with sicknesses, all right, if you do not take advantage of that salvation package of healing. The enemy will mess up your health. Same thing, you know, that same thing, you know, in a way that relates to every other thing that makes up the, pack, the salvation package. If the believer does not maximize or does not, you know, see to it that the things that makes up the salvation package that he has been given in Christ become functional in his life. The enemy will cheat him. The enemy will take advantage of him. It is in the same way with the ministry of angels. The believer haven't been given the ministry of angels on account of the finished works of Jesus Christ. The believer must see to it that he takes responsibility for the involvement, the activation of angels in his life. Now, when you look at the Bible from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation, all right, we will see that um, for many of the saints, many of the men and women who walked with God, 
Angels were very much involved in their lives. Angels, you know, from the book of Genesis to Revelation, you know, we've been made to see that they are a part of God's provision. They are a part of God's intervention. They make up, you know, a part of God's intervention in the affairs of those that serve him, in the affairs of those that, that worship him, in the affairs of those, you know, who trust in him. Now, when you look at, you know, those who lived in the Old Testament, you will see that in so many ways, angels were powerfully involved in their lives. As far as provision was concerned, as far as, you know, protection, all right, was concerned, you know, everything, you know, you see that angels were involved. Now, when you come over to the New Testament, you see the same thing, beginning with Jesus Christ. The Bible talks about the fact that, you know, on a certain time while he was praying, he said he prayed to a point where, after which angels appeared and ministered to him, and he prayed the more. Now, when you come over into the, you know, book of Acts, you see the involvement of angels, all right, in, you know, bringing about supernatural intervention, in bringing somebody like Peter out of prison. You see the involvement of angels, all right, in bringing instructions to people like um, Philip, to people like um, Peter, you know, you see the involvement of angels, you know, in the life of people like Paul, now, so on and so forth. Now, that shows us that angels are a part of God's provision for the saints. Angels are a part of God's provision for the saints. And it is important that because they are a part of God's provision, it is important that we have, particularly in this day and time we are living in, it is important that we have an understanding of their ministry. It's important that we know what keep their ministry functional in our lives. It is important that we understand how to discern their ministry. It's important that we understand how to release their ministry in our lives.